This is a build of the Mitsubishi A6M 2B0. I didn't pay £9 for it, I paid about £4.50 because I managed to get it for about half price. That all said, I bought it because it was a cheap plane and I wanted to make a zero because I hadn't made one and I've got a, a larger version to make so I thought it would be a good practice run to go on this. Also I uh, wanted to try out some AK uh, paint colours which was specific for this uh, aircraft. Typical Airfix plastic and I had a look at the pictures online and had a quick look at the cockpit um, saw there was uh, some holes in the seats and there's some uh, indentations on the plastic to represent those so I just took those out uh, to try and represent the um, cockpit as it should be although it was pretty pointless really because it's 172 and you're not going to see it cleaned up some parts I'm going to make this with the closed canopy sanding down with a sponge stick and a quick test fit it's always important to test fit your parts before you put the glue on and that's exactly what I'm doing here is just doing a bit of test fitting and also taking off those rough edges that are made when drilling out and you can use the uh, ultra thin to do that and just take them back as well as using a, a file of course looks a bit rough now but when it's all finished it's fine and what I'm doing is getting all the cockpit parts together and putting them together on a coffee stirrer so I can get those ready to go for spraying uh, and that way I can spray all the cockpit parts in one go it's the way I like to do it how you do it is up to you um, but I like to do it this way and there's decals to go on that the um, for the cockpit and I prefer that to be all painted up before they go on there was a big bit of waste plastic on the um, joystick there and all the parts needed cleaning up, which is yeah, typical of any model. So into the spray booth and I'm going straight in with, it's basically an interior green with a bit of black. I looked into the cockpit colors and they were saying that uh, the zeros tended to have like very similar colors to the um, RAF and United States Air Forces. But they were it's a slightly slightly darker interior green so at this point it's time to put on some transfers for the cockpit i use a micro set and micro sole as you can see and if you look at the blue pot under the main name there's a number one and if you look at the red pot under the main name there's a number two and that's how you know which one goes on first and which one goes on second i like to use my blue and red brush these are often given out with uh, revel kits and they're double-ended and it makes life very easy when it comes to putting on the um, transfers and using the micro set and sole because they color coordinate so you apply the blue one and apply that where you want the transfer to go preferably on a glossy surface and then once that's on and in place and then you use the red fluid over the top of the transfer and that essentially melts the transfer into the paintwork once that was all done the cockpit's nearing completion now so it was time to do a bit of a panel wash to give the uh, more used appearance to the cockpit and i use a panel line uh, accent color from Tamiya for this but there's many different versions available and um, in the moment you'll see that I hold up one part uh, that's been done and one that hasn't and you can sort of see the difference where it picks it out it works well so it just helps to create some highs and lows with the color because when you spray you just get this very flat color uh, and then by creating some dark areas and light areas you get this um, the contrast which is more pleasing to the eye so the next stage was to do a bit of aluminium dry brushing where you put a bit of aluminium paint onto the brush and take off the excess so it's virtually dry and then you just gently uh, rub it on uh, the edges of metal where there would be natural wear with people getting in and out of the aircraft and so on 
And here I'm just painting some fine details with uh, the various colours. Then it was time to assemble the cockpit and because I've painted the plastic surface has been covered in paint so I'm just scraping off the paint so when I put the glue on the glue will melt through and melt the plastic to each other otherwise you can get more of a resistance uh, if you leave the paint on and then I'm just putting that extra thin on that extra thin is so fine and thin as it says in the tin so I haven't done all that it was then time to assemble the cockpit it's only a 172 and relatively small scale and the canopy is going to be closed so I wasn't particularly bothered about uh, the amount of detail uh, and I chose not to paint the pilot so um, I often do but on this occasion I, I didn't and a uh, bit of extra thin and there we are sort of stuck in place and once again I'm just scraping a bit of paint off where the cockpit is going to stick onto the side of the fuselage to get a better adhesion with the glue always test fit before you stick the glue on and make sure it's all gonna fit all right and then this part in particular is is really important to get the nose area level and parallel with the other half so that you haven't got an overlap or a ridge it's very easy to get a ridge so it takes more effort to avoid it and now I'm just putting the extra thin through the um, top of the fuselage where the two halves meet. Once that was done, I then taped the two parts together to ensure that they're held together very well. And I also taped together the nose section to ensure that it was a square fit and that it was all good and left that overnight. Then it was time to assemble the engine whilst the fuselage was drying and one part of the radio engine was fine but this next part was so encased in, in plastic it took quite a bit of effort to get it out so it was a lot of chopping I've really speeded the video up here it was it was you know, it was doable it was fine it just seemed a little bit excessive compared to the other but I don't get involved in the design of it so uh, who am I to say the reasons why that was behind and I put that Tamiya extra thin on there just to take the edge off the um, the rough parts where I filed it down so I looked at the blueprints for the, the zero and saw that the there, there isn't actually a line on the uh, underneath of the fuselage so that would need to be sanded away and also there was a little bit of a gap so I'm using a product called Mr Surfacer 500 here to uh, fill this gap and try and get rid of the seam line and I've put the two pieces of tell me to take across the fuselage to restrict the where the uh, Mr Surfacer 500 is going to run to because I only want it in the little gap and but it's very hard to just get it in that area but if you put a couple of pieces tell me to tape on really closely and then the important bit is don't wait till it sets wait till it's partly set which is just a few minutes really and then you can just pull that back and then you leave left with this little fine line which you then leave alone and set and it's much easier to sand that bit back after i painted the radio engine i then went on to uh, dry brush with some aluminium um, i painted it black and then uh, dry brush with the aluminium and you'll see this ping out it's such a small scale that it was not really worth it in my view going into any more detail than what the kit supplied and besides this was just meant to be a, a quick kit and a quick kit fix i did a bit of research on the color here and uh, i was happy that i'd chosen the right color and that the instructions were slightly uh, incorrect in my view Once the surface of 500 had dried, I then sanded that back and it's time to glue the engine on. And I was quite pleased with it. It's a nice little aircraft and it's got some really good detail. 
Um, and uh, I like this kit. When gluing in the horizontal stabilizers and elevator, it was a tight fit and needed a bit of pressure. I had to hold that in for a, a little while. But, you know, firm bit of pressure and uh, we're away. And here I'm just checking that everything's square and not askew. And you can just see that the starboard stabilizer is slightly out there. So I've just made a, uh, a, an adjustment there to get that all square. So Mr. Hobby Surfacer 500 is good for very small indentations, but there were a couple of big holes after I put the wings on. And so I used my go-to, which is green putty. I've used many different ones. I prefer this one. Uh, I really like it. Uh, it sets very quickly. You've got to work fast, get everything ready before you put it on. Uh, and once again, I just used the uh, Tamiya tape and uh, other bits of tape so that the putty goes exactly where I want it to and it it's easy to do this whilst it's still drying so do not wait for it to set otherwise it'll just rip it all off and a waste of time it'd be a nightmare so and uh, once that's done you can just run wet tip of a cotton bud and you can just run that down the seam and that gives you a really nice finish I mean it looks you can see it there it's a lovely lovely finish and will virtually need virtually no sanding i wanted to put the canopy on to mask the cockpit whilst i was painting it then i wanted to take it off afterwards so i could clean it up properly and make sure there's no paint paint has uh, gained ingress into the cockpit so i used micro crystal clear and i just put three drops on and I knew full well that I'll be able to just get that off easily after it had all been painted. I then wiped it down with some alcohol. I stuck a base coat on of flat black from Tamiya. I found diluted flat black to pretty much be a good primer. And if you prime well, then you can avoid problems later on with paint coming off, like when you're masking up for further jobs down the line maybe not on this project but on other projects it's just good practice i've begun using red as a, a base coat more and more often especially with yellows and creams and that sort of color that really enriches the color amazingly better than whites so by applying a nice coat of of red down and then you put this sort of because the zero has a sort of yellow color it, it really does start to um, ping that color through the other thing i forgot to mention is that you can see the canopy has been sprayed uh, green that's the that's the cockpit color it's just so that the green is on the inside of the plastic um, so if you were to look into it and you would and you could see the canopy if you hadn't have done that and looked at it it would be either red or black but, but spraying it green gives the impression of it's all painted inside because it's transparent of course so pressing on with this red color it looks a bit you know it's like oh my god what are you doing uh, and you probably don't see many other people do it but the finished color gives some real depth really works on these creams and yellows so once that was done i then moved on to spraying the main color and i'm really sorry uh, but i sprayed the plane i thought i'd recorded uh, and hadn't pressed record and the only bit i've got of spraying the color are these smaller parts this is the exact color the zeros were and there's an exact paint match which is why i chose it but it went on extremely well it was uh, an ak color um, which is an acrylic lacquer and it's went on beautifully uh, it was such a nice color and is the uh, imperial japanese uh, correct color to use for the zero you will see it of course i just missed the um the filming of it and that was a rather silly error so there it is all sprayed up in the main color and it's it's, it's a glorious color it really is nice so anyway, I haven't realized my error. 
on this part I did remember to record and it is the color the main color in there but I've added some white because I'm just going through the various panels and then highlighting uh, some highlights and later on when I did a panel wash that will bring some low lights into it so you get the uh, uh, the the color balance instead of just being a uniform flat color in that you now get, create some depth so painting the nose I didn't have the exact color because it's not uh, a black and it's not it's like a very deep blue with some mauve in it so basically I'll put some uh, a drop or maybe two drops of red into black and it works pretty well I, I looked at some photo references and I was pretty pleased with that uh, I've masked the paint the paint the paint scheme off with these uh, post-it notes they're quick and easy to apply managed to drop it of course but and then we just carefully sprayed on the the color for the nose when using an airbrush always be aware of the angle if I was to come in the other way uh, I'd, I'd end up blowing it underneath the paper so so just be aware of the angle when using airbrushes as to where the paint's going to go so that done I carried on and painted some tire black rubber black Tamiya's rubber black around the, the wheels and I used a little bit of chrome marker pen, liquid chrome, to make the chrome or aluminium on the suspension. And I just pumped it so uh, an amount of it came out there, got a little brush and quickly painted it on. It dries very quickly, so uh, you've got to work fast. Once all the parts were assembled, just a case of putting a bit of glue onto the uh, suspensions and flaps and, and getting those on. There are a couple of uh, inject pin marks, but they're going to be covered up by the wheels, so I wasn't phased by those at all. And they were just carefully assembling the, the wheels and putting them on. Uh, Notes I didn't use extra thin, I just used a bit of Revel. Um, because it gives you a longer working time because it's a little bit fiddly you don't want it just sort of set in straight away so it's nice to have a, a little bit extra working time so time to assemble and uh, I'm just putting the wheel covers on here dab of glue and in they go painting the wheel wells was interesting some references are blue and some are the underside uh, color I've run with the underside color there isn't actually a huge amount of information on the color what I found was that the Mitsubishi had the underside color spread into the wheel wells moving on it was time to put on the transfers or decals depending on your age and where you're from um, and it's best practice in my view and a lot of others to put some gloss coat down because it does help prevent silver in which is where you can see the transfer sitting on top of the aircraft it doesn't necessarily prevent it but it does help towards preventing it and also when you come to doing any washes or weathering the the, the sealing of the paint with the gloss varnish uh, helps the flow of any weathering paints and oils you may use further down the line as i said before i use this dual brush from revel it comes with their starter kits um, i've picked up a couple over the years so i've got a couple lying around and i used a micro set which is number one and you put that on first and because of gloss paint it just sort of uh, puddles there and forms droplets don't let that deter you and then I had put on the markings and then this, this is the important part is to try and squidge that micro set back out now uh, so it creates a very tight layer to the paintwork then once you've done that you then just put a little bit of micro sole on uh, and then that will start to burn into the transfer and it will take on the contours of the aircraft and all the panel work and you should if done properly once it's all set see the markings come through as you can see in that picture and you can and then when you start doing panel line washes which I'm doing here 
then you can it starts to ping out the aircraft the panel line washes but on the that transfer you can quite clearly see that the panel lines are showing through and that's because of that microsole so i'm just using a brown pin wash here from tamiya and as i say you can you can just see the capillary action and that's down to the gloss and it's just pinging those lines out so you apply the panel wash and then you basically take the excess off with a cloth or a cotton swab and uh, hopefully just sort of leaving a small area where the panel line is sort of pinging through gently go around the plane and then take a bit off as it dries or once it's dried if you find that it's dried too much and you're having trouble getting off there is a neat little trick you can do which i'll show you in a minute on the horizontal stabilizers where it had basically dried too much so what you do is get just you can get the panel line wash and just reapply it and it, it lifts it all once again and then just wipe that off whilst it's still wet and you find it'll all come off it's very straightforward very easy and now on the on the right as you look at it you can see it's still wet and, and on the left it's already done and, and i'm just taking off the excess here whilst it's still wet uh, try not to remove it from the panel lines you will do it every now and again you'd have to reapply it. it's the nature of the game but just just gently taking it all off in the direction of air travel uh, so it's flowing from front to back and and you will get some very nice weathering effects although i don't show it here i do go on and weather the wheel wells as well and but here we're just showing you the, uh, the effect of, of the panel lines really brings them out nicely on this part i decided to paint on the an exhaust streak on the plane i was actually pretty disappointed with it I wish I'd just used an airbrush. I normally use a little airbrush, put a bit of smoke on there, and I, I tend to get a good result. But for some reason, I, I chose to use an, a, a, an ordinary paintbrush, and I wasn't particularly happy with the result. But anyway, it's there, and um, I can live with it. So it's, uh, but just to give a little smoke trail effect going down the fuselage. So that all done, I then decided to spray the matte coat on i use vms xxl matte coat in my opinion there is no better i've used quite a few if you've got silvering on a decal or a transfer you put this stuff over it it will get rid of it this is the best matte varnish out there that i have come across so far so and it really tones it down it really does and if you put a couple of coats on it will be so matte it will feel very dry very matte so and it's, it's wonderful stuff uh does it does a good job i was really pleased with the little plane i thought it was quite good the panel lines are pinned out there's a little bit of weathering on there you know there's a couple of bits here and there i'm not chuffed with but it's every single model i've ever made has got a few bits that i'm not particularly chuffed with so i'm sort of used to that but it was a little weekend build I enjoyed it it was good removing the mask of the canopy always a satisfying moment and if you remember i had to take the canopy off clean it and uh, reapply it uh, and i did that off screen there was a bit on the fuselage i needed to paint as well which i'd uh, forgotten in the first instance then fixing the antenna a little bit of rigging the tiniest of drops of super glue on there you should find that it pretty much takes it straight away give it a few minutes before pulling the wire across and then putting it on to the next part and then again the tiniest of drops i use fly fishing scissors to trim the rigging off and i find they can get in extremely closely uh, to the rigging to give a really nice tight finish whilst i'm just finishing the rigging off there uh, could you drop me a like and subscribe? It really does help the channel. Thank you. 
Once I've finished this, I've decided to make a simple little diorama for it to stand on in the case rather than just standing on a, you know, a wooden shelf. So I've got a bit of foam, decided to try and replicate the aircraft carrier's deck and stand the plane on that. And that's what we're going to go on to right now. So I'm just scoring some lines in the deck as it's going to be. And these lines that represent in planks of wood, um, cut some, uh, one way, and then I'll just widen the gaps for a small tool, uh, to get them a little bit more realistic, you know, and then I'll cut some, uh, marks the other way, just to make out those planks. And then I didn't film it, but I sprayed it black. And then I've got some Vallejo Air wood color and I'll put that on. And when that was all done, simple little diorama and it was finished. Mm -hmm. 